Hey everyone, so today we're going to be talking about something interesting that I saw recently, uh, and that is the fake real Hamon. Or maybe it's a real fake Hamon. Or maybe it's not fake at all. You know what, I'll let you decide that after you see this video. Alright, so I'll show you the video now. What it is, is it's a blowtorch Hamon. Uh, and so that's a sword being made with a Hamon using a blowtorch. And I've cut out most of the details that I think will let you know uh, which smith does it this way. Um, and honestly, I'm not even sure um, the, the real details of who it is. But I thought this was really interesting and I wanted to show you this. So what you can see is that the smith is heating up the blade edge to critical temperature and quenching it straight away into water as he goes along. And what this does is it creates the differential temper like a normal Hamon, but it's not done in the traditional method. So now if we backtrack a little bit, what is a Hamon? So a Hamon is um, where you have a differential temper on a sword so that you have a hardened edge steel, so it's extremely hard, while you have a soft spine. And so what that does is it allows you to have a very hard edge um, so that you can use it for cutting, keeps the edge well, uh, nice and strong, uh, and keeps your edge sharp for longer. But if it was too hard, then the whole sword would just break. So then having this softer spine on the back allows that flex to happen so that you can actually use it as a sword. And so how is this done? Traditionally, what happens is they put clay on the spine, they heat it up to critical temperature, and then they quench it in water. Um, and so the clay on the spine prevents the spine from getting heated up too high, and it also slows down the cooling. Whereas on the edge, then you have the, um, the steel heated to critical temperature, and then quenched and cooled rapidly. So you have this very, very hard edge while keeping the spine soft. And so an example of this would be my sword here. So I'm not sure if you can see that, but there's a little wavy Hamon line um, going up the blade. And so this one is a real Hamon, and it's done with clay tempering. But let's talk about some fake Hamons. So there's two main types of fake Hamons, uh, and that's where you have a sword. It's usually made out of stainless steel or it's through tempered, um, and then they wire on a Hamon pattern so that you get that wavy line, um, or it's etched on electrochemically. And the problem with this is that there's no benefits of the clay tempering. You don't have that extra hard edge and you don't have that soft spine. Um, but it looks cool, it looks similar, not quite the same. So now we come to the question, is the blowtorch Hamon fake? Um, and honestly, I'm not too sure. It's definitely not traditional, but can I say that it's fake? Well, you know, if we look at it then uh, physically, then the edge is hard, the spine is soft, and in terms of the alloys created, then yes, they are done the same because you heat the edge up to critical temperature and then you quench it, so you form more of the martensite in the edge and you still have the same thing as an actual Hamon. But let's talk about some possible issues with that. So when you're heating it with the blowtorch, then you know if your um, heat is uneven or if your um, blade is slightly uneven and the heat, it takes the heat differently, then as you quench it, it can get warped. And you won't really know until you're done and you take it out and whoop, got a banana. It's a bit warped. Um, another issue is, let's say that your heat isn't good enough, um, then you can have bits along the hamon where it's not properly tempered, it's not properly hardened. Um, so you've got these little skip zones, um, and it's really hard to tell if that's being done. And on the other side, if you overheat your material, then you can have a too large crystal size, and then you can create structural, um, structural integrity loss there. And you see this in forging when you heat up a material too hot, then it starts to crumble. Exactly the same thing could happen here, um, but it's really hard because it'll be on a very small area of it. However, all of these issues are still possible with traditional clay tempering. You can have overheating, underheating, warpage, all of the same things. But I think an important thing to realize is that the people who do clay tempering generally have a lot more skill, uh, and so they learn to control these things. And also, the, the issue happens to the whole blade or to none of the blade. And you can tell pretty easily. Whereas in this blowtorch hormone, then you know, it's a little harder to tell. And you know, I think there's two different groups you've got to look at with this blowtorch Hamon. 
is this a smith who has the skill and generally does clay tempering the proper traditional way and is now trying to create a cheaper line and to cut costs he's doing the blowtorch come on or is this a smith who generally uses fake come ons etches them wires them on um, and is now trying to upgrade his product and trying to sell a better product without having the skills to do a clay tempered come on and is now using a blowtorch come on because I think in those two groups, then there's a huge difference between them and their attitudes and the skill level of the smith, which then directly translates to the quality of the product. So in conclusion, then, you know, if the blade is done properly, uh, made by a skilled smith, and the blade is normalized, so you heat up to critical temperature, then you cool it down to give it even crystal size, um, then arguably this is no different from a real hamon, because physically, chemically, it's the same stuff, everything is the same. Um, but if it's not done properly, then there are these issues that can pop up. And you know, the skill level is variable with who is doing this. So the problem with this is it's very difficult to tell if it's done right. You can't tell if there's been a normalizing cycle done unless, until you break your sword and you see the crystal grain size in it. Um, and you also can't tell the level of skill and the level of care that's been put into it and maybe skip zones, overheating zones, might be really hard to tell if they're very small. So, you know, I thought this was really interesting and I just wanted to let you guys know that there are blades on the market that are being made like this and, you know, I didn't know it until I saw this video, so hopefully you learned something from this and, you know, keep an eye out for them, you know, it's a bit hard to tell but it's a good idea to gauge the skill level of a smith compared to the products that they normally produce and now if they've suddenly got these differentially hardened blades then maybe be a little bit wary. So that's all for today and I'll see you next time.